Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorrental Danzel Physics. In today's session, we'll be talking about the photoelectric effect, guys, and in particular, plotting the graph of the kinetic energy of the electrons liberated versus the frequency of the incident light, guys. Before we get started, guys, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible to help as many kids as possible. Okay, so let's get straight into it. But obviously, we need a quick recap on the ideas of the photoelectric effect. So let's do that first. All right, so here is our recap. As you can see, we have our Einstein's photoelectric equation. We've got HF is equal to phi plus EK. If you have forgotten what all those bits stand for, I'm going to define them right now. So HF stands for the energy of the incoming photon. Let's put that down. There we go. So HF is equal to the energy of the incoming photon. And as you can see, we've got the formula. The energy of the photon is given by H times by F where h is the Planck's constant, which is 6.3 times by 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds, and f is obviously the frequency of the light you're shining. So phi, this bit over here, this stands for the work function. So phi, this stands for the work function. And if you've forgotten what the work function is, the work function is simply the energy required to liberate the electron from its bound state. Let's put that down. There we go. So energy required to liberate the electron from the bound state and phi is constant per material so different metals will have a different value of the work function guys next one ek so this bit over here corresponds to the kinetic energy of the electrons liberated so let's put that down also there we go so ek is going to be the kinetic energy of the electrons liberated so we've had a quick recap hf is equal to phi plus the kinetic energy from here, we're going to now plot a graph of the kinetic energy of the electron versus the frequency of the light and analyze it. So let's do it. Okay, so here it is. Look, on the y-axis, we've got the kinetic energy of the electrons liberated. That's why I've put EK. On the x-axis, I've got the frequency of the light here. Okay, from here, guys, what we're going to do is I'm going to put the electromagnetic spectrum on this axis here, on the x-axis, to help us with this uh, problem. So we know that as you increase the frequency of the light, it goes from radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays. So we're just going to put that down over here. I'll put it in short form. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, and put little dashes here, uh, visible light, and then ultraviolet, X-rays, and then finally we're going to have gamma rays over here. Right, so from here, we should remember what happens in the photoelectric effect. Electrons are not liberated at any old frequency. It's only a certain frequency of light which will trigger the electrons to be liberated. When you've done your gold leaf experiment, you should be able to remember that it is ultraviolet light which starts the liberation of the electrons. So ultraviolet light will start to have the electrons being liberated. Now, from here, obviously, if you increase the frequency of the light, what's going to happen? Well, look at the formula. HF is equal to phi plus EK. Well, if you keep on increasing the frequency, so I'm going to put a little arrow here to show you, if I keep increasing the frequency, you're going to have a greater amount of energy of the photon. And therefore, when you subtract phi from it, the work function, the kinetic energy will get larger. Because don't forget, phi is constant. So let's put that down. Phi is a constant. So logically, as you increase the energy of the photon more and more as you increase the frequency therefore the kinetic energy will increase so from this point if you were to shine a light of a greater frequency the kinetic energy will increase so look x-rays it will go up and obviously if i put gamma the energy of the photon is now greater subtracting phi i'm left over with a greater amount of kinetic energy and that's the reason why the graph goes up like this Notice there's nothing, 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 then it goes up over here. Fantastic. So we end up with this graph over here. But what does that actually mean? How can that be useful to us? Well, first of all, I'm going to draw a straight line, which is going to be our line of best fit along these points. It will look like the following. There we go, guys. We have our straight line graph over here. Now, from here, guys, our task is the following. We've got to now relate the physics equation over here, hf is equal to phi plus ek, to the equation of a straight line. And you'll see the reason why in a moment. All right, so we know that this is an equation of a straight line, so I'm going to write down the following. We're going to put down 
y is equal to mx plus c. If you've forgotten what m stands for, m stands for the gradient of the line, c stands for the y-intercept over here. And now we're going to try and relate it to this physics equation, right? And the way you do this is going to be the following. Look what's on the y-axis of your graph. You've got the kinetic energy. You've simply now got to rearrange your physics equation to match up with the equation of the straight line. So look, on my y-axis, I've got the kinetic energy. So therefore, I will make that the subject of the formula. So look, we're going to put EK over here. EK, because that's the kinetic energy, will be equal to HF, and I'm going to move the phi over, it becomes HF minus phi over here. And now look, we can do something really cool. We can actually relate the different bits of the equation of a straight line to the physics equation. So look, on my y-axis, if I plot the kinetic energy, which I have done, look, and on the x-axis, I'm going to plot the frequency. So look, on the x-axis, as you can see, we've got the frequency. The frequency is changing. We can see that the gradient of this line will be equal to Planck's constant. So if I was to work out the gradient of this line, dash, 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 the gradient of the line will be equal to h. And that's the reason why it's constant, because obviously Planck's constant is a constant. So the gradient of a kinetic energy in frequency graph is going to be Planck's constant, guys. So that is our first thing to take away from this. Wonderful stuff. So we now know that the gradient is equal to Planck's constant. But also, we can work out something else, which is going to be the work function. And look, it will be there. It's going to be the negative of the y-intercept, because you can see that c will be equal to minus phi. So let's put that down y-intercept is equal to minus phi. The y-intercept is equal to minus phi. So if I was to extrapolate this line backwards, guys, I know it's not perfect. There we go, I've extrapolated the line backwards here. Obviously, imagine that's a straight line. This value which it hits will be equal to minus phi. And obviously, our kinetic energy will be negative, so that will be equal to minus phi, making phi positive. So don't forget that, guys, so that our y-intercept is minus phi and the gradient is equal to Planck's constant, everyone. Right, there's one more thing we're going to talk about, guys. It's going to be the threshold frequency. So the threshold frequency is the following. So let's define it. The threshold frequency is equal to the minimum frequency for electron liberation. And we're going to denote that as F0. So the minimum frequency required for electron liberation. So that will be found on our graph. As you can see, guys, the threshold frequency can be found here because that's when the electrons start to be liberated. We can also note that at the threshold frequency, the kinetic energy is going to be what? Zero. So we can put that down. So when the frequency is equal to F0, therefore, the kinetic energy of the electrons released will be equal to zero. There we go. Now, we can do one last thing before we move on. We can then plug this into our formula here. So we know that HF is equal to phi plus EK. Yes, right. Now, from here, we know that when the F is equal to F0, so look at the threshold frequency, I've replaced F with F0, that will be equal to phi, and the kinetic energy is now zero, so plus zero. As you can see, guys, this will lead us to the full expression of HF0, is equal to phi. So if you were to take Planck's constant, times it by the threshold frequency, it will be equal to the work function. That's going to be our next formula. Here we go. Wonderful stuff. So now guys, look, we've been able to analyze the kinetic energy and frequency graph over here. So just a quick summary before we go on. First of all, we plot the graph of kinetic energy versus frequency. We know it's a straight line graph going upwards only after a certain point. Obviously, you have to have the correct energy of the incoming photon for electrons to be liberated. Then, all I'm going to do is relate the equation of a straight line to the physics equation. I simply rearrange the physics equation to make EK the subject. EK is equal to HF minus phi. And then simply, I circled the different bits here and looked at what the gradient meant and what the y-intercept meant over here. We can see that when we circle it, we can see that the gradient of the line is Planck's constant and the y-intercept is equal to minus the work function. Fantastic stuff. And then I talked about the threshold frequency, which is the minimum frequency for electron liberation, which is obviously where it starts to go off, where the kinetic energy is zero. 
we're going to call the threshold frequency F0, and we can see that when the frequency is equal to F0, the kinetic energy is zero. Look, obviously, it cuts the x-axis over here. Then the last expression I'm going to get is I'm going to take the photoelectric formula, and I'm going to put in when F is equal to F0, EK is equal to zero, we can get another expression for the work function, which is H, F0 is equal to phi. Okay, so I know it's quite difficult, quite a lot to take in, but make sure that you're familiar with taking the equation of a straight line and relating it to the physics equation. But obviously with more practice and the more you watch this, the better it will get. And that's it for another session of Surrounds of Physics. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to get the channel going and good luck in your studies. Take care. Goodbye.